What's going on guys, Jcraft here. Been a little bit, but I thought I'd come back and shoot something real quick for you today. Uh, this is on a topic I don't see many people talking about. <clears throat> and let's be frank, that's like 90% of the content that I do. I'm talking about things that uh, other creators aren't talking about. And no, no, no harm, no, no ill towards any of them. But today we're going to talk about color grading really quick. Those of you who don't know, color grading is just like the process of restoring your photos to make them look beautiful. And I hear people talking about using third-party software, you know, photo labs and uh, just these background removal tools and everything like that. Uh, I'm going to be shooting a bunch of content here in the future, and we're going to talk about how to take better pictures so you don't have to do that. But the goal of today is to take really plain pictures and give them the correct pop. But to, to start with a good photo, yes, there's a lot of elements to that. But if you're already taking good photos and you just want to take them up a little bit further, you want them to rank a little bit higher in eBay, you want them to rank a little bit higher in Google, uh, this is the way that you're going to be able to do that. And we're going to do it efficiently. I take maybe three to 500 photos per week and I just don't have, uh, you know, hours on end to be going through and color grading them. So I'm going to show you how I color grade 300 photos in under a half hour, sometimes 20 minutes, and it, it's not that bad. Today we're using a Mac, uh, but there's lots of different applications that you can use. We're just using the built-in app within uh, within the Mac, the, the photo viewer type app. So what I have here is I have my Google Drive. These are all the photos that I've taken uh, just the other day. Now, I imported them into my computer, and you know what you can do is you can take the pictures on your iPad, you can take the pictures on your cell phone, whatever you want to do, and then just save them to your Google Drive. And if you guys want a video on that, just let me know in the comments. Once you got them up there, you can just select them all. You can you know right click and you know you can go down and select all of them or hit Control A and I'll highlight all your photos for you. And then you can right click on them and then you can go through and you can download them. And you wanna make sure that you've scrolled all the way down so you can see them all right now. You can see in the bottom left, it's only showing 150. There's 310 in this photo or in this single folder. So what you actually need to do is grab this bar, bring it all the way down, have it show you the rest of the photos and you'll see them refresh through here at the bottom. Once you've got all your photos, uh, what you can do from there is then download all of them. And we got some neat items as well. But you can see these these photos are kind of flat looking. You can see that the backgrounds are a little bit gray comparative to the white over here on the side. So grab all your photos, download them. Here, let's get this window out of the way. And here we have them actually on the computer. And uh, down here in the bottom right, this is just my recording tool. You're going to see this from time to time. And it's just what's allowing me to record the screen right now. Uh, but we'll get that out of the way even for you. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to right click. I'm going to go ahead and, is there a select all here? No, again, there isn't. So we're just going to hit Command A. We're going to select all of them, and we're just going to double click on any of them. It's going to ask, hey, are you sure you want to open this entire folder? And the answer on this one is yes. Now, I went ahead and started doing some of them. So you're going to see the, this first batch. They look really nice. Now, one of the other things that I'm, I, I'm going to suggest for you, and this is the same thing when you're doing offers to buyers, and it seems dumb, but it is an efficiency thing. Make this window small. Okay. And the, the reason that is, is if you're going to be doing 300 photos, uh, your hand is going to get tired just moving back and forth in this space. And if your screen is this big and you're dragging the mouse clean back and forth across the screen, you're going to feel it more after 300 photos. So make it a size that you can actually work with. And then what we have up here is we go over to tools. Here, I'll even close it for you too so you can see it. We can close this out. And I apologize if you can't see my mouse. We're going to go over here to tools and we're going to select adjust colors. And it's going to bring this up. And this has uh, the ability to you adjust your exposure, contrast, highlight, shadow, saturation, temperature, tint, sepia, and sharpness. Now, you don't have to know what all of these things mean. I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown. But you just need to know what a good-looking photo looks like. And then additionally, I'm using a special mouse. It's an MX Master Pro 2. You can get one used for about $45. I highly recommend it, okay? Because what I'm able to do is I'm able to map buttons on my mouse. Now, if you're not able to spring 40 bucks on it, I, I say save up some money and get yourself one. You can use keyboard shortcuts, okay? You don't have to do it the, the fancy way that I'm doing it, but I would suggest you get your keyboard shortcuts set up in a way so that way, you know, when you hit your, your arrows, I'm just pressing up and down on my keyboard. You can toggle through, okay? And then there's uh, shortcuts for uh, cropping and then this button right here that reads auto levels is going to be your most important button and what it's going to do it's going to go ahead and use the software it has to try and determine what the photo is supposed to look like and you can see these ones look good already this one's already done you see how nice those colors look a really nice clean photo and we're not doing any you know editing per se as far as like erasing stuff in the background but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to 
select him. I'm just going to put a little crop outline over him, and then I'm going to hit the crop button that I've mapped to my mouse. Now, you could also do it, and I think there's going to be a keyboard option. Let's see. Uh, tools, crop. So it's going to be Command K. So you can hit Command K, and you're going to be able to get that same crop. Now, if I hit auto levels, look how nice that looks. That cleaned it up instantly. Now, the only reason it's able to do that is because I took a high-quality photo. I just use my cell phone. A lot of you can use your cell phone. And then additionally, I have a clean, even background that it's able to discern the photo. Now, the other button that I've mapped is I've mapped the next photo. I don't need to go back often. When I do, I can just click over here on the side, but I've mapped next. Okay, and then I'm going to hit auto levels, and I'm going to go next. I'm going to hit auto levels. Now, the only photo I'm most concerned about cropping is going to be my first photo. That's going to be the one that's going to show up in search, the one that needs to be prominent. Now, if I want to, yeah, I can go through and I can crop that out. You see how quick that is? It's all one motion for my mouse. You don't have to crop all your secondary, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh photos because they're not going to be getting that, that presence uh, on, on the main screen. They're not going to be indexing into Google search the same way. So here we're going to toggle through. We're going to go to the next one. See, this is the first photo again. We're going to punch it here and then click on auto levels. Now, this one has a little bit of shadows. You can go through and clean that up if you want. You can say, hey, I don't really like how this is coming through because it's not really true to life. The spines on these books are actually a little bit more vibrant. I can go over here to my contrast, and I can jam my contrast up a bit, and I can, I can get a little more vibrancy to the colors. And you can see how the blacks are blacker. The purples, the blues, the slate, those all come up a little bit more. Okay. I can also increase the saturation. Okay, if I really, look at that, if I really want to jam those colors up, I can jam that saturation across. And if you bring it down, obviously, you're desaturating, you're pulling the colors out of it. Okay, but it's important when you're making your adjustments to your photos that you keep them true to life. If they're not true to life, okay, it's not an accurate representation of the item that you have, then you can go ahead and get yourself a, a item not described case. And you really want to be careful on stuff like uh, fabrics. You're talking stuffed animals, clothing, blue jeans, black jeans, whatever it might be, uh, photography, uh, you know, postcards, stuff like that. You really want to make sure that you stay true to life uh, with that. It needs it needs to look the part. So with one like this, I'm not going to crop this one. OK, this is second second photo, third photo. If there's like a crease in the background or something that I want to crop out, I can. Now, here's this one. Now, a lot of you guys out there, uh, you know, I, I see listings like this go up just like this. This is a horrible looking photo right now. Okay, because the subject is not tight enough to the frame. So I can just hit that, bring that in. And now what you're thinking, you know, oh, that's not big enough. Okay, well, what's going to happen is when that gets listed, this is going to fill the entire frame. This is going to get punched in and it's going to fill the entire frame on that photo. Okay, and this is another thing that's really great about this mouse is I have the ability to press down on a thumb button. I can zoom in and out. So if there's something that's maybe not right with the photo, I can, uh, I can adjust it right there on the spot. I can really take a good look at it. Now, when you're going through, too, if there's something wrong with a photo and you your, your key photo, your king photo, your first one that you have on the listing doesn't look the part, you jot that down, okay? Don't allow a crummy photo to go through, especially if it's your main photo. Don't, don't compromise and put your second photo up as your first photo. If it's not good, sideline it, okay? And that one's going to be slated for reshoot next week when you get another batch of items coming through. Here's a great example of one that could use a little bit more help. Now, if this was my key photo, I'd, I, I would be more concerned, but it's like a third or fourth photo. But I can see here that the background is just a little bit more gray than I'd like. And th the reason that is, is that this figure right here is bright white. So it's having a little bit of trouble. The software is discerning uh, what color this background is supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my exposure bar, and I'm just going to bring that up just a little bit. I'm going to bring it up, you know, not even 5%. And you can already see that the legs are getting a little bit washed out, Okay. And I'm really not looking for it to get, uh, you know, too far from what I actually have there. I'm going to bring the contrast up just a little bit just because I want those creases back on the pants. Now, is it the end of the world? No. But I just want it to be true to life. I want people to go through and look at the photos and, and not have a concern when they get their item. I want them to just know, yeah, this is what I've got coming to me. Okay. Sometimes you get these big items like this. And, you know, obviously here, let me undo that. You don't want your the edges of your backdrop showing up. And you can see where it's not properly lit because it's not directly under the item. You want a nice smooth background. This is just a piece of cloth running a 45 degree angle. That's all it is. I've been taking photos in front of this piece of cloth for a decade. It's a nice piece of twill with a stir, surge uh, stitch on the side. And I machine wash it once every month. 
I'll use one side for two weeks, flip it over, use the other side for two weeks, machine wash it, and then hang it back up again. And uh, try and keep it nice and wrinkle free. So what I'm going to do is same, same thing again. Crop, auto levels. Look how beautiful that looks. This is a really nice uh, Tupperware container. I got this from someone named Mindy. Used to be a fan of the show. Um, and uh, it's a great piece, but I, you know, I just frankly don't need it anymore. So it's going to be going up to the Ebays. So what, what, what's really nice about this is if you, if you have the means to just quickly go through your photos, you can get away with a lot more when you're doing your photography initially. You don't have to worry about uh, the edges of your um, the edges of your material. You don't have to worry about your lights being in the shot because you're going to be able to crop them out. I also like to include a ruler in my uh, plus shots because I want people to be able to get an idea of uh, how large the item is. And you can see too that this is something that I've been doing for a while. And um, you know, once you get to the the point where you're you know proficient in it, then you can certainly uh, hammer through your photos too. You'll see on stuff like this where you have a lot of white on white. Did you see how that uh, this purple part back here isn't true to color anymore? It got a little bit too dark. So sometimes rather than hitting the auto level, I'm just going to do it manually. I'm just going to bring my exposure up a bit. Okay. Because auto level, especially when it's white on white, will make some adjustments that just aren't accurate. They just aren't a, aren't a, aren't a real reflection of the item itself. Bring the saturation up a little. That looks about right. And they don't have to be flawless, you know. Just remember, we're just trying to shift some items here. That's all we're looking to do. And again, second, third photo, I'm just bringing them through, auto-leveling them. Not, they don't have to always be cropped. And the real benefit to this, too, is when you're using those tools, okay, the ones where you import 100 photos, and I know some people who are paying monthly for this, too. This is free software, guys. This is just built into the Mac, and there's free ones for the... Uh, you know, for a standard PC as well. People are paying money to have 100 photos go through. And then what do you have to do after after you're done? You got to go through and you have to review those photos. So you end up spending the same amount of time when in reality you could just go through and you could get done on your own. This is a nice little, uh, um, what do you call it? Rummy Cub set. Really nice looking. So I just noticed something right here. The color of the pieces here look a lot more true to life than they did in the last picture, okay? When I'm looking at these, they look almost a little bit brown. I don't know if it's a lighting issue, but uh, either way, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to punch up that brightness a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm going to bring down the saturation because I actually want to pull some of the color out of it. OK, so now if we look at the two, a little bit closer as far as the color. And it could be because it's surrounded by brown and then surrounded by white that it that, it you know, the, the software is really trying to like come to terms <laughs> with what color it is, which is going to happen. The only thing that this software is lacking is the ability to tilt rotate. Like if I want to adjust this just a one or two uh, percentage points. Um, additionally, sometimes you'll have photos that are upside down. And what I've done is I've mapped another button so that way I can rotate photos. So if you're taking, you know, photos of items and, uh, you know, you're twisting your camera around to get the right shot in, uh, it's going to really help you out when you're zipping through and you're doing your adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be quiet for a second. I'm going to let you guys see the process of how I uh, work with these photos. That one we adjusted the shadows on. It's struggling a little bit with the orange there. Does not like that color. Look at the sharpness on that. That's a that could be a stock photo for him. That was nice.
So this one here, what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing the temperature across. So the temperature is going to be, think of like a, of like light bulbs. You know how you have your cool light and you have your warm light? Your cool light being your blues, your warm lights being your oranges. And there's a temperature slider here. So if you bring it over, obviously you bring it across to the orange side, it's going to be more orange. And what I'm looking at when I see this photo is I'm just not liking the temperature of it. It's just a little bit on the warm side. And again, it could be because the browns and the whites uh, which does happen. So I'm going to bring it about 10 degrees over to the cool side. And you're going to see everything's going to get a really nice light blue tint to it. And it's just much more pleasant on the eye. So that's the point of that one. It doesn't really adjust the item itself, but you know, the foam block looks better. The background looks better. So that's why we did that decision on that one. I, I What I'm thinking is I, there was a period of time when I forgot to have my uh, headlight on. And I think that that's what happened with some of these, uh, these photos right here. So this is allowing me to come through and kind of pick up the slack for some of those mistakes I made. You can also see my backdrop right there in the top left corner. So we're going to, we're going to punch that out as well or get out as much of it as we can. Again, bringing the exposure up just a hair, cropping this one, my hands in this shot. So I'm going to go ahead and crop my hand out of that one. We got the edge of my photo station in that one. So we're going to crop that out, bring the exposure up. We're going to bring the temperature across. Nice. Good looking photo. There's some people too that I've heard that are paying virtual assistants to do this. And uh, what you can do too is once you really get going at this is you can just put a movie on honestly and then sit down and bang it out. But if you're paying a VA, you know, 15 or $20 to go through and do a hundred photos for you, just call me. I'll do it. I'll do, I'll do it for that price because I can bang those photos out in absolutely no time at all. Hey, this is a nice, um, a nice bolo while we're at it as well. Uh, this little siren doggo, I've got one listed for $50. This one's in poor, poor condition. This one's going to list for about 25. I believe it's Douglas brand. Yeah, you can see that butt tag right there. And uh, people love, love the Douglas dogs. I sold a English, English something the other day. There's that rotation for you. And I got like $45, I think, for it. It did great. I'm going to hit the tint on this one. And, oh, not the tint, the temperature, excuse me. Cool it down a little bit. I don't know who this guy is, so I'm going to run this one through uh, Google as well. Yeah, my headlight's off right now is what it is, I can tell. I forgot for maybe about 20 minutes, but uh, you know they're good enough to still push these ones through. Got some headphones, but yeah, that's it guys. I just wanted to share with you this. And then when you're done, what you can do is you can just hit the X on the top left corner and it's going to save all of the photos uh, and the adjustments that you made. Even if your computer crashes, it's, it's going to save it uh, as it's going through. So I just wanted to share this with you guys today. This is something that I've been meaning to talk about for quite a while. If you're still hanging out with me right now at this point in the video, I've just been uh, I've been going through a lot in life lately. And uh, I am looking to shoot videos more often. Uh, you know, I'll be getting in front of the camera here soon. I've been exploring new things. And I'm going to be taking uh, two months off of buying. Um, I've got maybe one more week worth of work here at the house as far as um, cleaning and listing items. And then I'm going to be 100% listed. And then I am going on a buying freeze. Two months, no buying. I'm just going to focus on selling through the holidays, uh, optimizing my store, doing store audit. And then I think I'm going to be shooting some more videos. I think that's really uh, what's going to be happening. So uh, I hope you guys have a, a jolly Q4 and you make a ton of money. Uh, if you're looking to get some consulting time in regarding your store, uh, I do have some available time slots coming through November and December. I love, love consulting with uh, sellers. I love being able to help people make more money. And if there's ever a time to pay for some one-on-one -on -one time and actually boost your revenue, it's through the holidays. 100% money back guarantee. We're not like uh, we're not like other gurus in that sense. Uh, where you're, you're going to pay for a, a regurgitated course on drop shipping. No, no, no. This is all practical e-commerce uh, stuff that you can apply day in and day out to increase your revenue. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate your ear, and I will catch up with you guys very soon. And, oh, and remember, I cannot let you go without saying this. If you don't make that money, someone else will. Cheers.